Stan Jubilisco here. I am going to briefly show you how a method called permeability tuning can be used to accomplish variable inductance without changing the number of turns in the coil. You've probably used uh, these types of devices even in some some more modern equipments that use inductors. But in any case, here's how it works, and it's described, among many other things, in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill and co-authored with Simon Monk, who was kind enough to provide new chapters on microcontrollers and the Arduino device for the more progressive among you. The old fuddy-duddies like me stick with the old technologies described, such as permeability tuning. Now this is figure 10-7, obviously taken from chapter 10. On page 177 of this book, You'll find it, however, in every edition of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. The, the chapter number may be different, but the illustration and the principle is just the same. You have a coil with a ferromagnetic core, and it's a solenoidal coil, and it provides a certain amount of inductance. It's a what they call an iron core coil, although really, the ferromagnetic substance is probably either powdered iron or ferrite, which is just powdered iron on steroids, you might say. In any case, the way that we vary the inductance is by moving more or less of this core material in and out of the inductor. And you can do that in two ways. You can either directly push and pull it out, pull it in, uh, pull it in and push it out. All right, no, you you can do that, but you don't do that. That's not typically the way that it's done. Instead, there's a screw shaft which allows you to insert more or less of this core material, this ferromagnetic core material, into the inductor by just turning a knob round and round and round. And if well engineered, with other circuitry, you could get quite precise tuning that way and control radio frequency equipment's resonant frequencies very precisely that way. And it, it, it some equipment still uses this method, uh, especially if you're an old-time radio enthusiast, you'll find uh, permeability tuning done quite commonly. It's also done uh, to form an inductive co uh, counterpart to a trimmer capacitor, a trimmer inductor, where you want a specific inductance, but you want to be able to vary it uh, just so that you can get its exact value uh, and uh, thereby align and adjust your circuitry accordingly. When you want a variable inductance whose value you can predict and control with considerable precision, the screw shaft type permeability method is still an excellent way to get it. And you'll find it described again in figure 10-7 on page 177 of this book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics 6th edition, but you will also find it in all editions of the book. I recommend that uh, if you want to purchase this book, you do it uh, as a paperback version, not an, as, an, as an electronic version, because uh, there can uh, be subtle and strange errors uh, because of incompatibilities between the electronic file and the particular device you happen to be reading it on. They haven't quite overcome the technical problems associated with that fancy highfalutin technology, but this technology has existed and has proven itself successful for decades. 
I have existed for decades, too, but as for whether I've proven myself successful, that will be up to the fates to decide, and up to you, whether you want to buy this book or not. <laughs> or pirate it, if you really want to get it and, and want the cheap way around, but good luck finding a pirated copy of an honest-to-God paperback book. You can get it used, though, on Amazon.com. And uh, you can save yourself quite a bit of money that way if, if, that's the, the, uh, if that's your thing, saving money. It hasn't been our government's thing for a long, long time now, but perhaps that will someday change, someday soon. I'd better shut up. Stan Jubilisco signing off for now. Until next time, so long.